you could choose an advert to turn into a video game, which one would it be? A GTA Orange Man Tango game, where you go around slapping people around the chops? Maybe a red car versus blue car Milky Way racing game? Or maybe a Resident oh, Evil 7 game, where you're trapped with this fellow in his house and his love of pork? Fred's got plenty! No, Arthur's got plenty. We've all got plenty. Plenty to go round. My wife's got what it takes. What's Scary. It Conceptually, of course, who would want a game based on a 30-second narrative designed to shill some junk at you? Not exactly prime video game material, is it? But sometimes, just sometimes, there could be the sprout of a decent idea that could be used. After all, advertising folk are all about inventive ideas designed to grab your attention. Except Barry Scott and the Go Compare Man, they're designed to irritate you more than anything else, I think. So what now? What's this? Well, generally, during an international football tournament, advertising folk look towards the multi-millionaires who kick bladders into netted bus shelters to bring them recognition. Which is difficult when, talented as these athletes are, they're not the most charismatic television personalities in the world. So often, the ad folk have to come up with creative ideas to make these sporting heroes a bit more interesting. The mission was certainly that. The mission was a 2000 ad campaign by sports megacorp Nike that aired in the run-up to that year's European Championships being held in the Netherlands and Belgium. If you don't remember that tournament very well, it's possibly due to the fact that the home nations performed pretty dismally. Northern Ireland and Wales didn't even come close to qualification, while Scotland narrowly lost in the playoffs to a desperately poor England side managed by Kevin Keegan, who themselves stunk the joint up when they got there and then went home with only a victory against old rivals Germany, giving them anything in the way of cheer. The mission advertising campaign was Nike's advert designed to sell their Nike Air Zoom Total 90s football boots and their football, the Nike Geo Merlin. In the advert, a two-minute glossy short film of adventure, Dutch coach Louis van Gaal leads a team of of turn-of-the-millennium European superstars in a covert mission to liberate the Geo Merlin. Now... Uh, Geo Merlin was a ball that was overlooked for the Euros, as that one was the Terrestra Silverstream, apparently. Perhaps the Terrestra was a bit shite and handled like those plastic Poundland balls that defy physics, and the football legends had a kick around with it and decided to sneak in and hopefully then put this on the pitch instead of that piece of crap ball. I don't know. Maybe the ball was good. I never touched it with my feet, and I'm bad at football anyway. Anyway, the players sneak into this rather posh-looking venue where their covert operation fails and they have to encounter, of all things, robot ninjas. And so they decide to make good their escape with the ball, using their football skills to evade, bamboozle and combat these cybernetic henchmen and escape with this lovely, desirable leather sphere. Very nicely shot, I'm sure you'll agree, and clearly drawing no small amount of inspiration from some of that generation's top movies like Mission Impossible, The Pierce Brosnan Bonds and The Matrix. So a game was made of it, featuring the superstars featured in that advert. Released on the PlayStation 1 the same year, although not until December, the Mission, an all-action football adventure, was developed by a team called EMG. EMG was a short-lived software house with just four games to their name. The game was published by Microids, best known for the Siberia series and Sniper Elite. So we're not dealing with big-name software houses here. As a concept, there seems to be scope for a decent idea. Certainly, taking football off of the pitch and into other situations can be done and has been done before, though usually as 2D platformers. The Hurricanes, Soccer Kid and Marco's Magic Football being rather average examples, though Go Go Beckham Adventure in Soccer Island is a ruddy good game that you should try that came out on the Game Boy Advance. In the mission, 
we're moving to a 3D realm instead and a puzzle game come beat em up thanks to the power of the PlayStation. And well, can you be a little bit more powerful please, Mr. PlayStation? First impressions are important and here they are very rough. 10 footballing superstars from the advert feature in your heist team here and you can select who to be from this roster. As long as you don't want to be Luis Figo, at least in one player. But don't worry, Luis Figo will be coming with you in tandem if you're player one, as this heist is done by a two-man team. You cannot, you see, move the cursor off of him in one player mode as he's the second player. So you can neither choose to be him or select someone else as your partner. This rather... Silly oversight is just the first indicator of how shoddy this game is going to end up. Another one is the representation of the footballers. Graphics again, not a very strong point here. So who have we got in Louis Van Gaal's squad of football pinching millionaires? We've got Manchester City's current manager, Pep Guardiola, a man accustomed to all manner of law-breaking practices given his team's 115 breaches of footballing regulations. We're to see him with a full scalp of hair, but there we go. We've also got Edgar Davids, a very decent midfield terrier who turned glaucoma into a marketing fashion statement. Davids was a very good player, don't get me wrong, but he wasn't one of the world's best, but he just looks so cool. Lillian Turam was a cultured centre-back with a girl's first name who represented Champions France at the Euros, as did Arsenal all-time legend Thierry Henry. Do you want me to say va va -vum? No, I'm not going... Oh, I did it, didn't I? Along for the ride is another teammate of Thierry Henry's, this time his gunner's pal, Nanquano Kanu, who definitely didn't play at the Euros on the account of being quite a bit Nigerian. Loved his Eddie Munster haircut, though. He sure rocked that. Finalists Italy are represented by one of their greatest defenders of his generation, that being Fabio Cannavaro. What a handsome young chap. These being Germany's lean years mean that their player is the solid and unspectacular former Newcastle and Liverpool midfield general, Dietmar Hamann. We know hairy wing wizard Figo is in the ranks thanks to his bloody-minded insistence of not being unselectable. The damn stalker, leave us alone. England have a player in the roster too, and it's a uh, striker. Yeah, who could it be? Premiership all-time greatest goalscorer Alan Shearer? Yeah, it could be him, couldn't it? It could be 1998 World Cup breakthrough and soon-to-be Ballon d'Or winner Michael Owen. Yeah, it could be him. Potentially, it could be Europe's Golden Shoe winner, given to the person who scores the most goals in a calendar year in the whole of all the European leagues. It could be Kevin Phillips, couldn't it, of Sunderland? I wouldn't think it would be, but it could be. But no, it's Andrew Cole. Yeah. Hmm. A great Premier League striker for Man United, but absolutely bobbins for England. The players all have different stats on the selection screen, but I'd be buggered if I could see if they actually played any differently at all. It's a great deal of fun to reminisce about these heroes of Generation X soccer, but the real reason I'm spending so much time discussing it is because I don't actually want to talk about the game itself. It's not good. At all. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. This is dreadful, and I'm not convinced it works in any way. If you've owned this or you've played this on an emulator, please tell me this. How on earth do you hit this lofted button on the first bloody screen? I pressed multiple buttons, sometimes pressed different buttons all at once. Nothing hits it. The shot button doesn't go high enough. The chip seems like it's performed by a piglet wearing flip-flops rather than the superstars of FIFA 01. Nothing works. Absolutely nothing works. You cannot hit this button. Maybe the tutorial helps. No, it doesn't. The tutorial doesn't tutor you whatsoever. The tutorial is just a series of targets for you to flail your shots at. It's utterly useless. There's no point in going on this screen at all. Is there a way to get past 
the first screen in this game. Someone please tell me in the comments. I'm utterly stumped by this. Completely and utterly ludicrous start to a game. Ease the player in. You can figure out how to get to the ball soon enough. You pick up the goggles and then you can either jump or slide underneath the lasers. Um, but as soon as the alarm button comes into play, you're stuffed. You're not wanting to play the other 24 levels of this. It just doesn't work. Something that does work, thankfully, is Google. And so does the password system. So I was able to show you some other screens. Does it improve? No, not really. The controls, which are pretty similar to most other proper football games of the PlayStation 1 era, giving it a sort of a lend of familiarity, but obviously with an added leap button as well, because I don't think many other football games had a leap button. They don't really work that well, though. You can shoot, you can lob, you can pass the ball, which will materialise back at your foot magically once you've launched it, but only if you properly welly it. If you don't, it sort of harmlessly rolls and get grabbed by one of the ninjas. And if it does that, then you can slide tackle the goof to get it back. And in the end, you just wish that you could just slide tackle all your opponents because that seems to be the most effective way of handling the game's combat system. Occasionally, you'll be able to let off a really powerful attack using a passed volley from Figo, and that will do a lot more damage. Yes, indeed, you see the Nike ball here is an object of assault, but it's not often it will work. You can switch characters to Figo if you fancy it, or if the health of your main character peters down, though if either of you falters, then it's a fail and a lost life, unfortunately. There are flame throws and swinging studio lights on some of the levels to act as obstacles that vary up a little bit, but the whole game is just so desperately unwieldy and monotonous. Sometimes the ball will just sort of dribble towards your opponent because you're not expecting it to appear back of your feet because your real intention was to give him an ankle snapping reducer. But that bloody ball had to get in the way and... You start to think about that and you just realise how broken this game is. It is not good. There's very little in the way of sort of individual skill moves either. I mean, imagine like you could have footballers in the game that had different techniques that you could use and it would vary the game up. Maybe use them as special moves. None of that. There's none of that. The technique of the footballer is that of a Sunday league level rather than the world class players that it's trying to depict. This is also, don't forget, the era of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. And, well, there's surely some scope for that sort of control with the buttons and directional combinations, giving you sort of attack multipliers, combos, team up moves with the other footballer, or even team up with the environment to let off like super shots. But instead, we get this it's an under design, rushed, vapid excuse for software. Another contender for one of the worst games I've ever played. A tawdry effort which could have been so much more. Even if it's just based on a throwaway advertising campaign from 24 years ago. In international football terms, it is a right San Marino is the mission. I couldn't find a UK review of this from the time, so instead let's forget that this ever existed and move on with our lives. Next up, we're going to stop in on Frank Skinner and David Baddiel as we sit on their sofa and play the Amiga version of Fantasy Football, which is another game that is apparently really crap. Hooray! Like, subscribe and K thanks bye.